hurricanes of the past. So even if you don't live on the immediate coast, if this is one of those high-end hurricanes, just mm -hmm. on the wind side of things, it could carry damaging winds, certainly to trees and beyond that, well inland. But again, we're getting almost ahead of ourselves at this point. we got to figure out where it's going first, but mm -hmm. let's just game that out there. One more question super yep. fast. This is from uh, Twitter from Sean Lindo. He writes, these are all good questions, folks. Yeah. Uh, are there any atmospheric features that may prevent Florence from continuously strengthening all the way to a possible landfall? Well, I just have one right here. Well, there's a lot of dry air that's circulating into it right now, and in fact, it looks like it's even dry right in the center. That's not an eye. That is a little piece of dry air that has come wrapped around it. So that dry air right now is holding it back a little bit. It is evaporating some of the cloud, and there's just enough wind shear over it right now that is allowing it to uh, may remain at the tropical storm strength uh, in the near term. But looking at the models going forward, day by day, now again, there's uncertainty in this, and mm -hmm. tropical storm uh, strength, uh, hurricane strength forecasts are very difficult down the, down the road. But look, early next week, we have it strengthening into a major hurricane. Okay, uh, last question, and uh, again, these are great. Please yeah. keep them coming as we roll forward. Dwayne Merrick on Twitter uh, asks, I have been surprised to see the number of tropical systems currently active. How often are there seven to eight systems active simultaneously <laughs> in both the Atlantic and Pacific basins? I have no idea. But I do know by looking at the pictures overall, not just with Florence, but overall in the bigger view, that uh, having so many either tropical depressions, uh, tropical storms, or things to watch, not just in the Atlantic, but in the Pacific. It's been a long time since I've seen it this busy. I'll put it that way. You get embarrassed when I, when I praise you, but you said <laughs> this was going to happen about two weeks ago. You said that we could see things change very rapidly in the Atlantic, and sure enough, that's what we've seen. Yeah, and pay attention to the forecast. No panic, of course, but watch the updates in the forecast because a lot of these tracks from the Euro model and Florence have it coming very close to the U.S. later next week. So just a heads up, have a hurricane plan. Dr. Greg Postel, no one better. All right, let's get back to Kelly. Have a plan. That is key. Being prepared, of course. That's what we want you to do, especially with a system like this that we are tracking. So, guys, have a checklist. When it comes to your evacuation, leave as soon as you're told to do so. Determine your safe routes. Take your pets with you. Don't forget about them, their food, their medication. Pack the essentials, the medicine, first aid kits, documents, blankets, cell phone chargers, critical contact information. Also, as you can see, as the list goes on, shut off your home's utility. Take your vehicle and house keys with you and unplug the electronics in your home, especially when you're dealing with a possible flood situation. All right, so some key points deciding on a shelter. Find out today, are you in an evacuation zone? Have a safe where to get there. Mobile homes are not a safe place to be, even with tropical storm conditions. And this is expected to be much bigger than that. A live look at Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Our coverage continues on Weekend Recharge. All money managers might seem the same, but some give their clients cookie cutter portfolios. Fisher Investments tailors portfolios to your goals and needs. Some only call when they have something to sell. Fisher calls regularly, so you stay informed. And while some advisors are happy to earn commissions whether you do well or not, Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when you do better. Maybe that's why most of our clients come from other money managers. Fisher Investments, clearly better money management. You know, when your mom and I first started dating, it was the easy... Yeah. Not helping. It just really hurts. When someone breaks their heart, be soft. Yeah, I know. When that breaks yours, be strong. You're lucky. Man, when I was your age, the only girl who would talk to me was grandma. Life <laughs> takes softness and strength. I had no game, son. Which is why we make Angel Soft with a balance of both. Observe this total unabashed freak, Mark. Mark is a Jimmy John's kickin' ranch freak, pureeing hot cherry peppers into fresh buttermilk with the fervor of a kid at the gates of an amusement park. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's freak yeah! the right things and something amazing happens. That's our inspiration for Fancy Feast Medleys. Wild Salmon Primavera tastes amazing. Also in pate, Fancy Feast Medleys. 
fact is, there are over 9,600 roads named Park in the U.S. It's America's most popular street name. But all state agents know that's where the similarity stops. If you're on Park Street in Reno, Nevada, the high winds of the Washoe Zephyr could damage your siding. And that's very different than living on Park Avenue in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, where ice dams could cause water damage. But no matter what park you live on, one of 10,000 local Allstate agents knows yours. Now that you know the truth, are you in good hands? Are we there yet? You don't always use your smartphone for directions. Okay, guys, out there. Or to laugh out loud. <laughs> You're in the middle. Yeah. But when it matters most, you count on track phone to keep you connected for less. Our smartphone plan gives you talk, text, and data with unlimited carryover starting at $15 a month. No contract. All with nationwide 4G LTE coverage. Get top smartphones or bring your own phone. Track phone for moments that matter. The window is closing for Tropical Storm Florence to not make a direct hit on the U.S. Straight ahead on Weekend Recharge, what you need to know right now, who really needs to start preparing this weekend, and if, if and when we could have a major hurricane threatening the East Coast. And it's amazing, too, because the remnants of Gordon playing a role in a very dangerous situation evolving from the Midwest to the Northeast. 33 million people under flash flood watches that stretch for nearly 1,000 miles and across seven states. What you We'll see in who could get half a foot of rain or more. And Paul live in South Carolina. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Maria. This is week two of the college football season. I'm here in Columbia, South Carolina. We have a big top 25 matchup going on. Weather a big factor in not only today's game here, but other games across the country. We'll talk all things weather and football in our 100 yards of weather segment coming up this morning on Weekend Recharge. Hello, good morning. Welcome into Weekend Recharge on this Saturday morning. I'm Maria La Rosa at Weather Channel headquarters in Atlanta. Confidence growing today that Florence will threaten the east coast of the U.S. late next week. Expert analysis you won't get anywhere else. That is straight ahead. But first, it is week two of college football. Paul Goodlow is live in Columbia, South Carolina, where the he could be a big factor in today's game between the Gamecocks and the Georgia Bulldogs, Paul. Yeah, Maria, he not could. It will be a big factor in today's game. We're here kind of behind the scenes with SEC Nation, our partnership with them, talking about 100 yards of weather. Come with me, kind of pan this way. Sorry about the change in iris setting here, but uh, this is SEC Nation. You see the bus here. We talked to Paul Feinbaum yesterday. We're going to talk to uh, more about him, Laura uh, Rutledge, uh, Tim Tebow, even Marcus Spears, our partnership with them. We're going to have this throughout the football season, talking about how weather is impacting one of the most popular games that people want to watch on Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays is all about college football. But you also mentioned what's going on with Florence, and that track could have it making landfall and impacting games next week across the southeast. Talk about how that could impact what's going on in week three of the college football season, as well as weather impacting today's game coming up as we continue this morning. Maria? All right, Paul, thank you so much. A busy weather map right now. A lot of it tied to tropics. And right now, bullseye right here with the heavy rain. So one of the big stories that we're covering for you on this Saturday morning, the remnants of our tropical storm. Meanwhile, also the threat for severe weather. So we'll take a look at the timing. And all of this heavy rain will be in place. So a big flash flood threat, flooding threat as well, including rivers and streams. So we'll take a look at that. And obviously, a huge amount of activity in the tropics from the Pacific, obviously into the Atlantic. It is awake. We have some invest areas. We have a tropical depression and another tropical storm, Helene, along with Florence that we have our eyes set on right now. So we want to get you the latest on what we know. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper has declared a state of emergency ahead of any possible effects from Florence. Emergency management officials in Charleston County, South Carolina, have started to prepare for potential activation and several cruise lines including Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, have altered routes to steer ships away from Florence.
And we've been watching this very closely. We've been talking about the differences in the models, but here we are right now. The latest on Florence max winds at 65 miles per hour. It is moving to the west at nine miles per hour. As you can see, losing a little bit of the bright tops of the showers and thunderstorms, but that is not going to last any sort of trend in that uh, direction. As you can see, the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center keeps it moving and keeps it strengthening. A major hurricane as we get into Tuesday and into Wednesday. And you see once again, sites set on parts of the southeast to the mid-Atlantic coast by Thursday. Now FEMA Director Brock Long reacting to the tropics being in overdrive, saying, quote, I can't recall a time when so many storms have threatened the U.S. in such a short time frame between Olivia, Florence, and several other storms in both Atlantic and Pacific. We all must do everything we can to be ready. Follow at ReadyGov and hashtag prepare now. And that's exactly what we want everyone to do right now because Dr. Erica Navarro, you're here. We have the luxury of time still, mm -hmm. but we're starting to see an important window close on Florence. Yeah, and that window of preparation also right. is closing as we head forward in time here. Florence is expected to bring potential direct impacts to the U.S. next week, likely Wednesday or Thursday. But things are already starting to pick up in terms of the large swells and the rip currents, and the risk here for other direct impacts will only increase as we head towards next week. So now is the time to prepare. This is still a tropical storm, but given the conditions that this storm is expected to move into, we are expecting that to change. It's moving west at nine miles per hour, and this is a slow movement. This slow movement is anticipated to continue over the next couple of days, and personally, that to me is a little bit scary, because given what the storm is moving into, warm ocean temperatures and a sheer upper-level wind shear that is likely to relax, that slow movement over the next two days could give this storm a chance to realign and organize that has further impacts down the road to potential impacts across the U.S. So here's what we're expecting. We are expecting a bit of an increase in that forward speed here, but not by much. This storm uh, is anticipated to come close to the East Coast. And look at these intensities. This is a potential major hurricane coming up the East Coast here, given what we're expecting. A very serious threat here for everyone along the U.S. East Coast. We're five days out, so at this point, we cannot pinpoint exactly where this storm is going to make impacts or even give you a, a city specific. At this point, we have to talk about regions, and we're talking potential impacts here anywhere from the Northeast Coast of Florida up towards the Carolinas. That looks like the most likely area at this time, but that could change. The uncertainty in track is very high, even right now uh, at this point, looking towards next week. So what's going on right now? Well, uh, this right here is dry air that's being wrapped into the center of the storm. This isn't an eye that you're looking at. This is the air mixing into the upper level clouds. So that's a good factor. That's something that's weakening the intensity of the storm. But if we look at the steering pattern for Florence, we have a strong high pressure here that's expected to build over the coming days. With clockwise flow around that high pressure, that's going to steer Florence off to the west and potentially a little bit off to the north. Unless something changes where that flow weakens around that high pressure, it is not likely that Florence is going to move out to sea at this point. There's a very small window of opportunity that it could turn, but that window is closing significantly with every model forecast that comes out. And looking at the sea surface temperatures that are off the east coast, this is the other cause for concern. As that Florence moves off to the west, it's going to move into increasingly wa warmer ocean temperatures. This is going to provide the fuel for that further strengthening as at the same time that upper level wind shear is going to allow for that organization. So that is a very scary forecast because if you look at what the models are expecting, and granted, there are still on uncertainty. Even here, we could still be seeing big changes. The models right now are, are calling for that intensification up to a major hurricane range. So we really need to have a serious conversation about potential impacts along the, east, uh, the U.S. East Coast. So here's what we know right now. We know that it's going to be moving off to the west over the next five days. It's likely going to pass south of Bermuda, but that doesn't spare Bermuda from impacts. Large swells and rip currents are a risk along the coast of Bermuda. Uh, the U.S. impacts are going to be possible in the possible in the middle of next week. So likely Tuesday through Thursday, that's the window of time. But uh, depending on how fast that storm comes in, if it slows down a little bit, that would make those impacts bleed later into the end of next week. So this is the time where you have to check every day with the updates in the forecast, especially if you're on the East Coast, because things can change in that time frame. 
Right now, with uh, five days out here, the exact track and even the impacts remain uncertain because a lot of them are tied to that track. So again, this is further uh, here. We have to, again, have that conversation, Maria. We got to check every day, and we can't wait until next week uh, to make those impacts, uh, to, to uh, prepare for the storm. But I like what you say. You can't do the city-specific yet. We have to talk about regions, and, and that's important because a huge in area of impact, and it's not just the direct landfall that we're concerned about too. We have a rain factor with this system that we're going to be watching uh, very closely as well. And we've already seen some significant flash flooding due to showers and thunderstorms in the last 24 hours in places that don't need it. So when you look at this map, it's not surprising how wet it has been year to date in so many places, including Baltimore, 45 inches of rain so far this year. You also see some big rain totals from West Virginia to, K to Kentucky and into Tennessee. But when you look at the soil moisture, another component, another Another factor going into how much of a flash flood risk are we looking at? It is a bullseye in those areas from Harrisburg, DC, Richmond, all of those places that have been in the news recently because of all of the rainfall. Now, when you look at this, I know it's it looks like a rainfall QPF map, but this is rain needed to flood. So what you see as the yellows and the oranges actually correspond to lower numbers. So uh, less rainfall needed to flash flood, but you still have those spots where it does not take much to create some flash flooding absolutely concerned about the flash flood threat here because one to two inches of rainfall not out of the question. This is aside from what Florence might bring as we get into the next couple days. We're talking about a front and Gordon uh, at this point providing some of that deep tropical moisture and that flash flood concern. But Florence will add to it, we do think, and once we figure out uh, where that main impact point is going to be and then where the remnants go beyond that. But we have to watch Florence's tropical moisture as part of the flash flood risk coming up. Well, the tropics playing a role in that high potential, as we talked about in the Ohio River Valley, the remnants of Gordon and a cold front teaming up to drop that heavy rain. Uh, Indianapolis, some of the big cities under the gun. Cincinnati got an early shot of those problems as rising water stranded drivers. So we have, again, that high risk for some flash flooding in that area, in orange especially, uh, but know that that's not just the only spot. Uh, as you can see, just over the last five days, how much rain some of these areas have picked up, that yellow indicating anywhere from three to five. <laughs> when you are talking about three to five inches, we've heard, you know, eight to 12 over a five day period. That might not seem like a lot, but that is sufficient. Uh, we've grown so accustomed to hearing some of these big numbers, but it really is something. So you look at the current radar and there is a bit of a cutoff here. You have uh, northern Indiana, northern Illinois, Chicago included there on the drier side, but heavy, steady rain swirling around through uh, southern Illinois with the flash flood warnings. Take these seriously. We still have a lot of rain that has yet to fall in these areas with several inches of already coming down. Clay and Richland counties out until 815 at Central Time. Watch your drive along 50 here uh, between Harder and uh, into the Ohio River Valley. You've got uh, I-70, a factor as well. The showers and thunderstorms going to be uh, a problem along that drive. And you can see, again, some of that heaviest rainfall just to the south of Indianapolis. So the flash flood watches are up, but a huge area from Missouri on into Pennsylvania, New Jersey, parts of New York State as well. These are all areas that have accumulated a lot of rain in the last week and several inches to go. So here's the setup. We have the deep tropical moisture that's being steered to the north with that jet stream dip kind of uh, joining forces here and squeezing out all of that moisture. That boundary is in place, not moving very much. That's always a concern where you get the opportunity to see rounds of heavy rain over the same area. And eventually we'll start to see some of that push off to the east with that tropical moisture flowing to the north. So you see the connection and connecting the dots with our tropical system. System, tropical moisture now uh, flowing to the north. So Indianapolis by lunchtime, we're seeing some of that heaviest rainfall. We have Cincinnati, uh, Covington, Florence all in it by dinner time, uh, beginning to roll through between Indianapolis and Dayton with some heavy rainfall as we get towards the overnight. And you still see that I-70 corridor eventually into Charleston as well as Pittsburgh. Uh, a lot of heavy rain towards the overnight early tomorrow morning. So again, between now and tomorrow morning, very likely to see that flash flooding, but also notice the darker shade of green going all the way from Arkansas into Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Western Virginia, and 
northern uh, North Carolina. And then you can see also into the parts of the northeast as we get from Sunday morning into Monday morning, all of those areas, uh, the possibility of some of that heavy rain leading to some big, big travel problems. And we know it impacts a lot of plans today, including if you are heading out for some college ball. We know that's the case in Columbus, Ohio today. Kickoff at 3.30 with the uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knights into the Ohio State Buckeyes. Temperatures in the 60s, but you see 100% chance of all of that rainfall. All right, the agony of the heat. It is week two of college football. Some fans will be enjoying the game with a whisper of fall in the air, but fall has yet to find South Carolina. Meteorologist Paul Goodloe joins us live from the famously hot city of Columbia to talk about today's game between the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs and introduce our segment 100 yards of weather. Paul, I can see the fall foliage behind you. <laughs> yeah, what fall foliage? <laughs> Not really perhaps a drought-stressed tree, but uh, fall is a far cry from what the weather we've had yesterday and even today here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's definitely also the heat continues on the field. Big top 25 matchup, number three Georgia Bulldogs here in town to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks. They're ranked number 24, so a big time impacts of this heat. Temperatures in the 90s, and uh, this is our segment, 100 yards of weather. It's a combination of the Weather Channel and SEC Network and their show SEC Nation, which will uh, kick off here in less than an hour in the stage behind me and a great partnership with them. And we've talked to coaches uh, across the SEC and ACC uh, about how weather impacts football. In fact, I talked to uh, Vanderbilt coach uh, Derek Mason about that earlier. Take a listen. We have a beautiful day today, coach, but summer can last well into the fall here in the South. So how do you prepare your players to deal with this heat, which can last a long time? Well, we talk about the idea of changing up our practice schedules and making sure that uh, for us, uh, we, we, we hit surf different times of the day, certain times of the day, so that these guys can acclimate to the process. But for us, it's all about hydration. It always has to be about hydration, hydration, hydration. So for us, uh, moving the practices are good, but making sure that our guys are you know, hydrated properly is, is exactly what we do. Hydration is key. Temperatures in the 90s today. We'll talk more about how weather is impacting not only this game, but other games as well. And Maria, we're also talking about how next week's games could also be impacted by what we're also watching, Hurricane Florence, something that definitely is going to impact. Uh, oh. Dear four mothers, your society was led by a woman who governed thousands, commanded armies, yielded to no one. When I found you in my DNA, I learned where my strength comes from. My name is Courtney McKinney, and this is my Ancestry DNA story. Now with two times more geographic detail than other DNA tests, order your kit at AncestryDNA.com. So you'll be here to help protect my car? State Farm will be here. What about here? Yep. What about here? Here too. Yeah. Here? I don't think so. That makes sense. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm. This is Matt. Look at him, the little freak. Matt's a super fresh lettuce freak. Slicing it daily to 3 30 seconds of an inch. The tastiest width for lettuce. Good for you, Matt, you dang lettuce freak. Freaky fresh, freaky fast. Jimmy John's freak yeah. This is my doctor. This is my grocer. These are my back roads. Those are my heroes. That was my high school. And this is my privilege. Since 2005, DISH and our partners have helped bring emergency communications access to disaster areas across the country. So families, friends, and first responders can organize, mobilize, and connect. More and more people are finding themselves in a Chevy for the first time. You can too during the Chevy Labor Day sales event. Now through September 10th, use Labor Day cash to get almost $5,000 below MSRP on this 2018 Equinox LT when you finance with GM Financial. This Labor Day, discover why Chevy is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Please allow me to introduce myself.
I always wanted to speak French, but I never had the time. And then I tried Babbel. Babbel, the quick way to get conversational in a new language. Babbel's award-winning interactive technology gets you speaking right away. After just four weeks, I was feeling confident enough to have simple conversations in French. Their app uses a science-based space repetition method that really helps you retain what you learn. It works. So, which language do you want to speak? Now, you can try Babbel free, the number one selling language learning app in the world. You're learning phrases that you can use right away in real life conversations. And I was amazed at how fast it was, and now I'm speaking French. I always thought I was bad at languages, but after using Babbel, I can see I was just taught the wrong way. Try Babbel free today. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and see why Babbel is the quick way to get conversational in a new language. Babbel, which language do you want to speak? You can't stop storms from coming. Cops knew that they were racing against the clock. Given the weather conditions, the police knew that this was related. Currently in our area, 63 degrees under cloudy skies. Today, generally cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. High 73, winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, mainly clear, low 55, winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Sunday, mostly sunny skies. High 76, winds northeast at five to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Florence will create problems long before it returns to hurricane strength. We will see the effects all along the eastern seaboard, high waves, Significant rip current risk increasing from Long Island down to Miami Beach. As the storm inches closer, the mid-Atlantic beaches like Ocean City down to the Georgia coast, you'll see larger swells coming on shore. All of those places all in play for possible impacts from Florence. And Dr. Erica Navarro, you're here with more because that is really the case. The sun will be shining, but you're going to get effects from this long before it approaches the coast. Absolutely, Maria. And to think these effects will happen whether or not that landfall eventually occurs. With a storm like this moving off the east coast, we know that we have big swells to come just because of how strong this storm is anticipated to be. Uh, so let's take a look at the waves. Uh, they're already starting to pick up along Bermuda, and we're expecting those waves to translate to the east coast here through the end of the weekend. You can see near the center of that circulation, the waves are in excess of 40 feet, uh, is the forecast here. Uh, 30 feet as you get closer here, but notice that outer edge as it passes off to the south of Bermuda brings potentially 15 to 20 foot swells there uh, for most of the islands. Definitely something to look out for in terms of the waves, but we do have the rip current risk there as well to talk about. Now, as this storm approaches, the U.S. early next week, we will see those waves start to spread all the way from the southeast uh, up towards the Outer Banks and eventually off to the northeast. Again, uh, potential 15 to 20 foot swells. And of course, this comes on top of the high tide. So this is definitely uh, in play for potential impacts along the beaches. The rip current risk will be high as well throughout the week. You can see it extends from Florida high risk there along the Space Coast up into the northeast. We have high risk here for much of the Mid-Atlantic along the Jersey Shore up towards the Long Island Sound. So Maria, this is a big deal because this threat does take lives. Even if they are indirect impacts, it's still something we have to watch out for. It's always tougher to convince people of that when the sun is out and you're not seeing this raging storm. So we will continue to watch that. But you know what? We're not taking our eyes off the rest of the tropics. It is lighting up. So let's get you some of this before we dive really deep into to Florence. We've got Tropical Depression 9 looking quite healthy. This would next be Isaac on the list. We have winds at 35 miles per hour moving to the west northwest at five miles per hour. So this one too expected it in the forecast to strengthen to a hurricane and you can see by Tuesday into Wednesday a 90 mile per hour hurricane in the forecast but as it gets towards early on Thursday beginning to uh, approach the island. So again here too uh, time is a luxury and we have time to make hurricane preps here uh, in parts of 
of the Caribbean. We're going to continue to, of course, have much more on the tropics coming up at 50 pass. Well, Nothing like being out in the rain supporting your favorite college football team, right? This was last night in Dallas. Texas Christian taking on Southern Methodist inside Gerald Ford Stadium. This was the 98th all-time meeting between the teams in series dating back to 1915. The 16th-ranked TCU Horned Frogs getting the best of the Mustangs in the rain. That final score, 42-12. to 12. And we're calling it the agony of the heat. It is week two of college football. Many fans enjoying that game with a nice fall crisp in the air, but not so much in South Carolina. I see that warm sun shining on meteorologist Paul Goodlow joining us live from Columbia. You've got the Gamecocks against the Georgia Bulldogs. Doesn't get better than that. Yeah, we got plenty of heat as well, Maria. Temperatures low 90s today during the game. Kickoff uh, the hottest part of the day, like 3.30 in the afternoon. I want to bring in Marcus Spears, one of the co-hosts for SEC Nation. And uh, we have a partnership with Weather Channel and SEC Nation. You guys are about to have your show coming up. And let's talk about this brutal heat yeah. in the game. Big time game going here to SEC. Uh, what's the one thing players should be concerned about as they try to take the field coming up this afternoon? I, I think controlling yourself before the game uh, is a big deal. And it's not talking about much but a lot of times the energy the emotion it just gets to you and you probably die out a little bit faster than you would if you kind of conserve until you get to the game obviously you're trying to spill your guts during the game but just in those warm-ups and getting hype when you run out in front of a hundred thousand people don't let that get you I mean I, had I've had, yeah, yeah I had the experience we were in New Orleans actually inside but I don't know why it was so hot. It was called the Superdome at the time. I don't know why it was so hot, but I was so hyped and so excited about playing the national championship. After the first possession in the third quarter, I cramped up. I had to be taken to the locker room, get IVs, chug a bunch of Gatorade, and then come back out and try to compete again. Now, on the field is one thing, but talk about now. You're actually, yeah. your show is coming up. How do you stay cool in the, in the heat and the sun here well, doing the show? Well, first of all, I got to give a, a big shout out to all of our behind the scenes guy. Bobby especially is uh, over keeping us situated up there on the stage. So we have actually some cold vests and shirts that we put on. Um, Anthony, if I can get Anthony, bring me that cold vest. I'm yeah, we got show, like 30 seconds yeah, left. Show so. everybody, man. This is, this is cold water is ran through these tubes right oh, here. Man. And they circulate all throughout your core. You keep your core cool, usually your body will take care of itself. Yeah, so I'm going to take this off your hands, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, that's a gift to you. <laughs> I appreciate this. This should be uh, heat gear for the Weather Channel. Absolutely. Marcus, man, thanks for your appreciate time. Appreciate it. Thank and you. And we'll uh, tune in today at 10 o'clock for the, your show, SEC Nation. So, Maria, I think this should be the, the the new uh, part of our gear here, out here in the heat, a cold vest. Love it. Um, I'll take a size medium. Thank you. All right, Paul, we'll check in with you in just a little bit. Florence already affecting the beaches as it inches closer to the U.S. coast. Where it ends up making landfall could make a big difference. Who, outside of this cone, should pay close attention to its potential path and dangerous flooding lingering for days? How much more rain could add to those problems? Breathe freely fast with Vic Sinex. My congestion's gone. I can breathe again! I can breathe again! Oh. Vic Sinex. Breathe on. Here we go. Discover. I like your card, but I'm absolutely not paying an annual fee. Discover has no annual fees. Really? Yeah. We just don't believe in them. Oh, nice. You would not believe how long I've been rehearsing that. No annual fee on any card, only from Discover. From our store to your car door. Choose drive up at Target. That's a mini wheat. Delicious. But it's more than that. Ten layers of crunchy wheat to fill you up on big days. Whether your day involves steam, mountains, or whoa, fire, we've got your breakfast right here. Is your breakfast built for big days? So you just walk around telling people Geico could help them save money on car insurance? Yeah, that and homeowners, renters, motorcycle and boat insurance. Huh, that's nice. What happens when you catch a fish? Oh! Geico, more than just car insurance. See how much you could save at geico.com. I'm okay! Do these moves look familiar? Then you might have a condition called dry mouth. 
Biotein is clinically proven to soothe and moisturize a dry mouth. Plus, it freshens breath. Biotein, immediate and long-lasting dry mouth symptom relief. Update your floors with Empire Today's $50 room sale. Buy one room, get floors for all other rooms for just $50 each. So when you buy one room, it's only $50 for laminate in the kitchen, $50 for carpet in the bedroom, and $50 for hardwood in the office. There's no limit. Buy one room, and it's $50 for floors in each additional room. Schedule now. 800-588-2300 Empire. Today. Who knew? Yeah. So you're with the UPS store? Yes. In fact, we printed these right here. Oh, I thought you guys just did shipping. No, we do printing, packing, faxing, notarizing, shredding, mailboxing, copying, taping, binding, uh -huh. <laughs> consulting, designing, returning, storing, printing. Oh, and of course, shipping. So you're in the shipping? We also do printing, packing, faxing. Come into the UPS store today for every aim your small business needs. And of course, shipping. To err is human. To anticipate is Lexus. Experience the Lexus RX with advanced safety. Standard. Experience amazing. We've got breaking news. Let's go live to our storm team. Dave, what's it like out there? What? Are, are we on? I, I, I can't hear anything. Hello? It appears we lost Dave. Looks like a weather tech day. You'll always be prepared with seat protectors, floor liners, cargo liners, and cargo tech containment system, bump step, and no drill mud flaps. Order yours today at WeatherTech.com. You never know when it's going to be a WeatherTech day. Closed captioning brought to you by Fiber Choice, a daily prebiotic fiber supplement. It's hard to get all the daily fiber we need from food alone. That's why I love Fiber Choice. With the fiber found in many fruits and vegetables, Fiber Choice, the number one GE recommended chewable prebiotic fiber. Welcome back to Weekend Recharge. I'm meteorologist Paul Griddle live in Columbia, South Carolina, where the Bulldogs take on the Gamecocks today at 3.30 local time in the heat. Temperatures in the low 90s. We talked about how weather could impact football, not only the heat, but also perhaps thunderstorms, as well as look ahead towards next week. Could have a major hurricane bearing down across the southeastern U.S. Big impact not only on people, but also college football games. We'll talk all things weather and football coming up this morning on Weekend Recharge. For real. All right, Paul, and while we have heat, a big problem for games this weekend. In many cases, it may very well be heavy rain and tropical weather that will affect areas next week. And we have a, an ocean full of tropical activity right now. Of course, all eyes on Florence. A tropical storm currently, as of the latest advisory, likely not for long. We have it moving west at 9 miles per hour with 65 mile per hour maximum winds pressure at 997. We do have other systems to watch out for, including Helene. Uh, we, of course, with this Florence storm, there's a good reason we are focusing so much on this and have been for the last couple days because it is not often that you see a major hurricane approaching the southeast coast in a forecast. We do have the luxury of time right now. This is still five days out. Dr. Erica Navarro is here. And Dr. Navarro, I'm, I'm getting questions now. Mm -hmm. uh, people asking whether they should cancel plans along the southeast coast. And what can you say? You have this whole region that could be looking at that question the next couple days. Yeah, and I think that's a very serious and uh, appropriate question at right. this point in time. Given what we're expecting with the forecast, even with the uncertainty that we're suggesting, when you have this kind of forecast coming into the U.S. East Coast, you have to change your thinking because we are talking a potential major hurricane landfall along the U.S. East Coast that is going to bring impacts if that forecast verifies. Right now, Florence is still a tropical storm. It's encountering some uh, some upper level wind shear as well as some dry air. That's good news because that's limiting the intensification at this moment in time. But as we advance into the weekend and into the early part of next week, those conditions are forecast to change. It may pick up a little bit of forward speed here, but in that time frame, it is going to have an opportunity to re-intensify to hurricane status and potentially even major hurricane status. So what we're looking at here is on Thursday, sometime Thursday afternoon, maybe evening, maybe even into Friday, a potential major hurricane right on our
our doorstep heading somewhere in the vicinity of the southeast coast. It could be anywhere from northeast Florida to the Carolinas right now. That, uh, that de those details are not clear this far in advance. However, as we get forward and closer to that date, they will become more clear and we will have much more information on that uh, as we get closer in time. Uh, so let's take a look at Florence here. There's the storm and there's a high pressure that's forecasted to build here off to its north. This is a key factor in the future track of Florence because it's going to determine how far north it goes. If that ridge stays strong and continues to build, that will steer Florence more to the west here. You can see it's going to be forced in that direction regardless because of the presence of that clockwise flow. But if, say, the west side of that ridge here, that's this part here, weakens a little bit, that may allow Florence to gain latitude. That would bring impact